Hello, and welcome to Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh's Kids Club at Home. My name is Kevin, and once again, I'm really happy that you could join us this week. And for this week's activity, we will be designing and building structures that can move water. And this activity is a great choice to do outside, maybe on a warm day, because you might get just a tiny bit wet while working on this. Now caregivers, this activity involves engineering design skills, which is just a fancy way of saying defining a problem and developing multiple possible solutions to fix it. And while this process certainly applies in the world of STEM, it also has relevance for literacy skill development as well. Just like an engineer might design multiple possible solutions and evaluate them, so do young readers and writers need experience evaluating multiple arguments for effectiveness and clarity, making this activity one that strengthens both STEM skills and literacy skills alike. But before we get started, let's do this week's icebreaker. And since we'll be thinking about and working with water this week, this week I want to know, what is a memory that you have, good, bad, or in between, involving water? It could be a positive memory, it could be a challenging one, it could just be an experience you had that is notable to you involving water. Now for me, there's something that jumps out right away, which is learning how to swim. Because my swimming teacher was also my school teacher. I had swimming lessons with her. I would leave school once a week, take the bus to the pool, and there at the pool magically would be the teacher whose classroom I had just left. She was so strict and serious in the classroom, but so funny and charming at the pool. It was quite a contrast and a lesson that people can be all sorts of different ways depending on where they are and what they're doing. I will always remember learning to swim from my teacher. So what about you? What's a memory that you have involving water? You can let us know in the comments wherever comments are open. So as I said, this week we'll be building structures that can move water from one place to another. So it's worth taking a moment to think about where and how we interact with water in our daily lives. Now for me, I feel like I use a lot of water pretty quickly after waking up each day. I use the bathroom, which means flushing the toilet, it means washing my hands and washing my face, it means taking a shower, it means making some coffee, it means filling up my water bottle, and it means maybe doing some dishes. That's almost 10 instances of me using water before I've even left the house for work. Which makes me wonder, do I even know how the water I use gets to me? I can see it leave the faucet or the shower head. I can maybe even figure out which pipe it flows through, but beyond that, I feel like I don't really have a good idea of how water moves around to get to where it needs to be. This makes me wonder if I had to design a system, maybe even a simple system, for moving water around, could I even do that? What would that even look like? It's worth taking a moment to think about these questions before we get started, because while many of us might be lucky to have all the water we need when we need it, we might not have a clear understanding of how it gets to us and the challenges that that poses. You may have received supplies for this week's activity in a grab-and-go kit available at select CLP locations. Your adult can call 412-622-3114 to learn more about these kits. But if you didn't receive one, that's totally fine. You'll still be able to participate with the creative use of some pretty regular household items. And that's really the first step, is to gather those items, supplies, and materials that you think could be useful in building your water-moving structure. Now, if you're feeling a little stuck about what kinds of materials to gather, of course, you could keep watching and see what I come up with, but also you could think in terms of categories. For example, what can you find that water can flow through, almost like a pathway? That could be straws or other types of tubes. What could you find that water could start in or end in in your structure? Those could be water bottles or cups or bowls. And what might you use to connect things if connecting things becomes necessary? That could be tape, rubber bands, glue, sticky tack. It might be helpful again to think in terms of categories if you're stuck. And of course, you don't have to use everything that you gather. It's also a good time to think about where you might build your structure. Again, I strongly, strongly recommend outside, but if you are thinking of doing it inside, it's a good idea to check with a grown-up first to make sure that it's workable. But I'm going to start gathering my supplies now, and I might think in terms of those categories too. We'll see what happens, and I'll show you what I found when I'm done. 
So here are some of the materials I've gathered for my water moving structure. And if you look closely, you might be able to see that I have organized them in a particular way. Can you figure it out? Yeah, if we start all the way here on the left, we have supplies that I think could be useful for water to pass through. Here's a metal tube, here are some plastic straws, and here's some aluminum foil that I think I might be able to shape and mold into a pathway, almost like a gutter or a drain for the water. Here in the middle, I have containers that maybe the water could start or end in. I could pour them out, I could use them as a vessel in the middle, I could use it as a landing spot at the end. And I have a few different materials here as well, plastic, styrofoam, paper. I think those will be really useful. And all the way here on the right, I have my connectors or things that I think might be good connectors. Here's some clothespins, paper clips, plenty of rubber bands, some funky tape, plastic clip and a ton of toothpicks that I don't really have a plan for yet, but they could come in handy. So I sort of have three categories, one, two, three, of different materials that might come in handy when I build my structure. So take a look at what you found. Can you sort yours into different categories? Are you starting to get ideas for how you might use what you found? I'm going to start moving on to the next step and I'm really excited to see how I can put some of these materials to use. Now that we've gathered materials and thought a little bit more about how we might want to use them, it's a good time to set a goal for your water moving structure. You can ask yourself, what do I want my water moving structure to do? Now, this could be as simple or as complicated as you'd like. A simple goal might be, I want to build a structure that can move one cup of water a short distance without any major leaks. A slightly more complicated goal could be, I want to build a structure that moves one cup of water a short distance, but the water ends up in two separate places at the end. You could also just tinker with the materials you've gathered and let your imagination run wild, but it might be nice to come up with a specific problem to solve using the materials you've gathered. Now for me, the challenge I'm setting for myself is I want to build a water moving structure that has an exposed drop of at least one foot, which is just another way of saying, I want there to be a mini waterfall in my structure, a section where the water is not in a tube and it's just kind of falling over the edge into something else. I have no idea if I'll be able to pull this off, but I like the materials I gathered and I think it might be possible. So what about you? What challenge might you set for yourself and how might you go about accomplishing that? Be sure to think about what space you'll be using as well. Now for me, to really plan this just a little bit more, I'm going to draw a quick sketch of how I think my structure might work with this mini waterfall. And again, whatever I sketch doesn't have to be what I ultimately end up doing, but it might be a good idea to get it down on paper to think a little bit more before I start building. I'm going to do my sketch now. You're welcome to do one as well, and I'll show you what I've come up with in just a moment. just finished my sketch of how I think I hope my water moving structure might work and I have to say I'm really glad that I did the sketch because doing it raised a big question. You can tell it raised a big question by the gigantic question mark and that question is what is this whole setup going to sit on physically? What's going to support it so that it's not floating in midair the way I drew it here? I think the setup makes sense in theory. I've found a way of using tin foil and rubber bands and a cup to make a spout that will create a waterfall that will flow down to the final basin at the end, but I still need something to put all of this on, which means maybe I'll need to consider a new space, I gather new materials, or just continue with my original plan and see what happens. Now what about you? If you did a sketch, how did it go? Did it raise any questions or wonderings about how your setup might work? Are you happy you did the sketch? Did you find it helpful? Now caregivers, sketching and drawing yields substantial benefits for learners of all ages across subject areas, regardless of artistic talent. Certainly written notes can be nice, but drawing and sketching have a way of cementing concepts and improving recall that really written notes don't always have. And plus drawing and sketching is often much more accessible for young learners and much less daunting than its written alternative. 
So now I have everything that I need, at least for the time being. I have my goal, I have my supplies, I have my space, I have my sketch. It is time to start building this structure. I'm going to gather everything, go to my space outside, and see what happens. You'll see me building in just a moment, and I'll show you how it goes when I'm done. You can do the same thing, and best of luck. So here is a zoomed out look at the simple water moving structure that I built. It took a lot of experimentation and tinkering to get to just this point. You might remember that my goal was to have a waterfall at least one foot high, and this waterfall definitely exceeds one foot. Maybe it's closer to three feet. Anyway, let's see how it works this time. Pouring the water. Yeah, looks like a waterfall to me. I also like how this is catching most of the water so I can reuse it for future tinkering, although it does depend on how quickly I pour. There's a little bit more. So satisfying. So if you were to extend or add to this structure, what could you do? Could you move the endpoint or make it a different kind of endpoint to continue the flow of water? How did your structure work out? What kinds of challenges did you face and how did you overcome them? How might you extend your water moving structure to include more or different parts? Now, I've got to get inside. It looks like it's about to rain and that's a little too much water for me today. I really enjoyed building water moving structures with you this week. I found the whole experience both fun and challenging. And the whole time I was thinking about how people over hundreds and thousands of years have been able to manage and control and distribute water. I am humbled by their collective expertise. Now, if you have a suggestion for a future activity for us to do together at Kids Club, you can share them in the comments wherever comments are open on social media. You can find us on Twitter as at Carnegie Library or track us down on Facebook by searching Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh. If you're interested in doing another water-related activity, you can head on over to PVS Kids guided investigation of how different objects sink and float in different kinds of water. It's a nice compliment to the very open-ended activity that we just did together. This one is much more scientific and narrowly focused and focused on why things work rather than tinkering and exploring. You put these activities together and you'll have a really nice well-rounded experience. If you're interested in a book about water, we have a great recommendation for you. It's a picture book called We Are Water Protectors and it's written by Carol Lindstrom and illustrated by Michaela Goad. And it's about the importance of water and indigenous-led movements. It's available to check out in print, as an ebook on Overdrive or Libby, and as an audiobook on Hoopla. You can also check out our STEM book lists on our website for more great fiction and nonfiction recommendations. Or you can just give us a call or send us an email, and we'll give you whatever book recommendations you're looking for. As you may know, every summer, Carnegie Library of Pittsburgh celebrates summer reading. And while that program has looked a little different this summer and is drawing to a close at the end of August, there's still time to participate. Summer reading is an important tool for building connection and excitement during those summer months, for fighting off the pesky academic summer slide, and for generally preparing kids and teens for the transition to school in the fall. This summer, we've asked Pittsburgh youth to read five ebooks, audiobooks, graphic novels, anything that's of interest, and you can register for summer reading still by going to our website, carnegielibrary.org slash summer, where you can track what you've read using our Beanstack app. We're also still doing book giveaways at select CLP locations while supplies last, so give that location a call or just pop by where Pittsburgh youth can receive their free books again while supplies last. Now you don't need a library card for any of this, but if you don't have one and are interested in getting one, we can help you out with that. You can go to our website, carnegielibrary.org and register there, or just give us a call at 412-622-3114 and someone will be happy to help you out. Thanks again for watching Kids Club at Home. We hope you enjoyed creating with us. You can tag us at Carnegie Library and share what you made today. Be on the lookout for those grab-and-go kits at select CLP locations. We'll see you next time.